everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Jane. And I'm Ashley. And we're So, so Making, making it, up. it Up. This week we're going to talk about coats and cardigans. So this time of year, it's a bit difficult, isn't it, to know what to wear. It starts off mm. really cold and then it gets quite warm. So um, we are looking at the Sapporo coat. I've also made some Nina cardigans and... It's Cotigans. Yes, and Cotigans as well, so boiled wool Cotigans. So. I think it's um, it's sort of, as you say, it's a time of year where it's either really, really cold um, or you're going from being really cold into maybe a shopping centre or a shop environment and then you're boiling hot. Mm -hmm. So I think the Sapporo coat and the Cotigans lend itself to um, having those sorts of environments and they dress up or dress down um, a nice pair of trousers or a pair of jeans. So um, we really, really like the pattern. So I've started trying to do some knitting and knitting jumpers and the Sapara is really good if you get a, uh, quite a big chunky jumper. Mm. It's a good coat to wear on top of that because sometimes if I put a chunky jumper on and then wear a normal coat I look like, like a Michelin man trying yeah. to walk around because yeah. it's, it's too big. So it's brilliant for that. Um, I find them brilliant for work and you can make them pretty much in every type of fabric mm. I think. So we've got some variations going on here which we're going to show you next. And I think the thing the, with the coatigan as well, the boiled wool coatigans, you can actually, I, I wear my coatigans underneath my Sapporo coat. So I've got a variation of colours that, um, depending on what mood I'm in, because um, the Sapporo coat you'll see when we show you, have got slightly, um, it's not three quarter length, is it? It's just sort of wrist sort of, comes, comes, comes to just above your wrist. Um, so if you've got something underneath, you will be able to see it. Can see it, and I've kind of mucked around with the pattern. So although I like the silhouette of the Sapporo when I first got it, I've got quite long arms anyway. So I've actually extended the sleeves on my coats and not kept it as per the original pattern as well. And I haven't had to do that. <laughs> Shorter arms, maybe. Monkey arms. So um, let's show you what we've done and um, some of the different fabrics and we can talk about the fabrics as we show you and the, and the linings I think is worth pointing out as yes. well. So this Cotigan, um, I'm probably the most recent one that I made and it's the colour is peacock blue. Um, it's like a boiled wool um, and I think I got it from Cloth Spot. Um, it was only about... It wasn't much more than about £12 a metre, which I thought was quite reasonable. Um, and as you can see, the Cotigan pattern has got the, um, the pockets that have got the same fabric inside. So it's really strange when you first make it and you put the pieces together because you line the pockets up and then sort of twist it round. Um, and then this lining, we talked about playing about with the lining and... Um, being able to you know, make the coat wherever you want it to be by either having plain lining or patterned lining. This is just a cotton, that was from um, John Lewis, probably about £10, £12 a metre. Um, I just thought that looked quite nice with the peacock blue. Um, this is faux mohair and I got this as a, um, a kit. Um, it was £50 for the kit and I got the fabric, so the faux mohair which is really nice and soft, the lining, the facing, um, and the pattern. So we'll show you the pattern a bit later. Um, again, this one, I've got the fur goes right through into the arms and it's just, looks really good with jeans and it's just, yeah, my favorite coat at the moment. The lining I got from Croft Mill ages ago and I really like this lining, it's beautiful. We'll ignore the fact that the front panels are upside down, slight, slight cutting error. But this was only five pounds a meter. I don't know if they've still got it, um, but I think it, it makes a real difference if you've got a plain exterior fabric, having a really cool lining just bring, brings it to that next level, really. So that's that one. And then this one, number four. So it's the same, I've extended the sleeves again. I got this fabric from eBay, I can't remember the seller. It's, it's a bit of a weird one, this, it's got a slight pile on it, and I'm, I'm not sure it's the wool, I think it, it's kind of man-made, but it hangs nicely. I can't remember where I got the lining from on this either. This is a cotton lawn, um, and inside the sleeves I've actually 
actually lined it with proper lining so it doesn't stick when you're you know putting it over jumpers and stuff as well but the cotton lawn I think works well it's a nice lightweight and um, although it's sort of a white cream colour it's lasted quite well I haven't had to wash this quite you know a lot um, and it kind of goes with anything so Cotigans um, as you can see I'm partial to a bit of boiled wool um, I have three, um, I made three Cotigans and I have to say I wear these all the time. Um, they are a Demi Shaw um, waterfall cardigan pattern and it is so easy to make. I remember Jane, you, you helped me, didn't you, make this. The first one I made was the grey one and um, it was, I was a bit daunted by it first of all but I have to say it's just the easiest thing. You've fallen in love with them, haven't you? Yeah, I have because they're just... They're so nice to wear with jeans. Um, blue is particularly good with jeans. The grey is good with jeans. This is nice. I've got um, a couple of green tops that I've made that I wear this green one with. I do quite like a do quite like a green colour. Um, and you just literally you cut it out. Um, you sew it together and press the press the um, edges flat. Really, really easy. Um, and I've been commented on. Uh, several times when I've been wearing them. Actually, a lady in, in Jigsaw asked me where I got the grey one from the last time I was in there when I was wearing it. So, um, yeah, really good. And we're going to put some pictures in of you wearing them. And the good thing with boiled wool as well is you don't have to um, overlock it. You don't have mm. to bind the edges. It doesn't fray. Yeah, so these edges are just, they are just cut. Um, you just cut them and that's it them and leave them. Okay so these are cardigans by, and they're the Nina cardigan by Stylark. So these are slightly more fitted than the waterfall cardigan. Um, so they're fitted towards the back and I, I will put some pictures in of us wearing them and they have a waterfall effect at the bottom. Excuse the hairs. Ponte Roma tends <laughs> to attract all the hairs for some reason. So I've made them both out of Ponte Roma. Um, I can't remember where I got this from, but you ponder where you can get quite um, widely from a number of places. So I've overlocked this, but again with this it doesn't fray, so actually if you didn't, I've bound both of mine because I wanted to just a bit more body to um, accentuate how it falls at the bottom, but you don't have to put bias binding on them if you didn't want to. It's quite, quite a quick and easy make. I think that these take about no more than an hour, mm. I think. Um, this one I wear when I'm feeling brave because it's a bit bright. It does look nice with jeans. You definitely need to wear darker things to tone it down a little bit. Um, but and this one's bound with um, blue, which bias binding I made myself, so it's not all wrinkly.